And okay, welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversation. A pleasure to welcome to the program two dear friends of mine and the world. And on my far left is uh, known to many people who watch MNN with any regularity is Joshua Volinsky, Esquire. And he's a producer of, uh, uh, of the Josh Volinsky Show and also a contributor in many, many extended ways to better communications in the society. He's a long associated with uh, WBAI and now he's been associated with Manhattan Neighborhood Network. It's helped innumerable people to make innumerable programs, great supporter of public access. And Josh, welcome so much to Conversations. Well, it's really Really great to be here. Okay. I'm very happy to be here to share this space with Harold Hudson Channa and Pamela Timmons. Which is a great <laughs> lead into the one and only. The one and only, and I could be, introduce Pamela f officially as it were. A major filmmaker, I think destined to become uh, perhaps one of the nation's major t uh, producers of uh, multimedia. She works very diligently, a great editor, a uh, person of great concern, comes out of a rich background, uh, artistic background, and she produces uh, very good programming, a clip of which we're going to show. And she's also uh, now becoming involved with, um, with public access. So we're going to want to talk about video production, video, how it fits into communications in general, and also how particularly Manhattan Neighborhood Network and the uh, public access uh, systems around the country and increasingly the world fit into the overall pattern, but Pamela, th no. thanks for coming. Welcome. Thanks so for very, the great very introduction, Harold. Thank you. No, I think it's the case. Uh, you have had an association. You, we went to a film the other day done by the one and only Ken Burns, which has done major yeah. work in terms yeah. of, you know, video production that really has an educational uh, clout to mm -hmm. it. And you do similar yeah, work like that. You've been working yeah, with the two-row wampum and all that. Yeah. And so, welcome very, very much. Okay, well, maybe we could kick it off. Maybe Josh, or we're gonna, we want to talk about two things. We want to talk about video production. We want to talk about multimedia production in terms of the overall communication of the planet evolutionarily. It's becoming more and more important and uh, the equipment is getting more and more uh, malleable to, uh, to uh, you know, thoughtful uh, projection of images and so forth that have been just the dream of filmmakers out of the history mm -hmm. and it's moving more democratically all the time. There's major changes and exponentially increasing exponential capability coming out of the computer labs that is making a revolution going on. So we have a, a revolution in communication that now involves multimedia and it's only just happened yesterday in a certain sense in terms of the long hall of communications and the educational yeah. potential is huge, don't you think it so? Is. Maybe you can share your own yeah. background a little bit and then uh, also you've been involved in communication and you do very, very yeah. good editing and so oh, forth. Well, Maybe you can yeah, kick it off, yeah. okay? Well, I, my mother was an artist so I was really lucky to be able to be working with the fine arts since I was a child mm. and mentored by some really wonderful fine artists mm -hmm. including William Siegel mm -hmm. who Ken Burns has done a short film about. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. it was aired <coughs> at the, uh, I was invited to the screening at the Metropolitan Museum of Art mm. where Ken and Bill had a Q&A. Uh -huh, and, and Ken Burns was involved in that? Yes. Uh -huh, okay. Yes, a trilogy and mm -hmm. so that really inspired me to see what potential there was to be a visual artist and you know work with the moving medium. You're a painter. You do yeah. impressionist and other yes. things and really good work. I've seen it. Uh, We've been to your place upstate you. and your work is really really inspiring and art and artists yeah. that's been there since you know you had Van Gogh and painters and so uh -huh. forth. But you well, when did you pick up there. on the uh, multimedia, particularly television and let's just say filmmaking as a generic thing, but it's also television making now, they're blending and so on. When yeah. did you pick up on that? Well, ever since I was a child I was interested in it, but I would say once it turned into digital video mm -hmm. and I realized that it could be streamed worldwide, uh -huh. that was it. I, I knew I had to learn how to make that happen. Okay, did that, w would you, do, you, do you have a rough way of dating when that happened to you as an well, epiphany for you personally? It was part it was of what was... Around 2000. Around yeah. the turn of the century, yeah. the, this millennium. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh -huh. working with VHS and uh -huh. producing 
producing for public access. Were you? Yeah, uh -huh. upstate New York. Uh -huh. But really, it was the digital video that you know really got my interest. Uh -huh. um, just last weekend, I was able to uh, bring forth the Vision Hub, which is a whole new concept on live streaming uh -huh. uh, video. Yeah, you that's know? happening now, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and so we had a vision hub at Columbia University. A vision and hub. What yeah, is that? Yeah, uh, that's a term uh, for a live stream uh, venue. Okay. Where an audience can be watching a summit without actually traveling to that summit. Right. You just stay in your own community. Well, that's streaming. Yeah, it's and they've live had stream. You do live. that at your. Well, they have a thing that's available. Uh, we're public access, so public access usually doesn't have uh, people that produce locally, usually don't have access to uh, like transponder time and the kind of things that the networks, the major networks have for doing that. Right. But streaming is available, and we're streaming everything here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network now. That's I'm right. of the opinion they ought to do a big public relations campaign around the fact that everything that's aired on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, the four channels, may be destined to become more in the near-term future is not only aired on cable in Manhattan, but it's also streamed, available to everyone in the world, soon to be in high definition. <laughs> and that's a big, that's a big quality uh, consideration yeah. of uh, multimedia communication that's developing again out of the computer revolution, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how quickly everything is And it's moving forth. exponentially. So yes. it's, it's a one-way trip. It's not going to do anything more than be more bandwidth, more access. They had a thing one time, I think they were talking about email. Email is too cheap to meter. We have to start uh, designing for abundance. There are <coughs> qualities of abundance They've been limited by the bandwidth. You used to have to do That's right. YouTube. You had to have a 100 megabyte file that could be a two hours long, but it would be pretty grainy and all that. Right. But it's now all moving exponential. And I don't think there's any way to uh, get over the fact that there's going to be more and more and more capability <laughs> for more and more and more people mm -hmm. to do multimedia uh, yeah. Production and distribution, right? Yes, yes. And that's a good thing. It is. It is. Uh -huh. That's the way the young people are, you know, picking up on what's happening in their neighborhood and around the world. Mm -hmm. They're actually watching YouTube. And that's what this Vision Hub, it was actually on YouTube. It was on YouTube. Yeah, and now it is archived on YouTube. So okay. So you can go back and reference it. And you say hub, is that like a group of people who get together? That's what the hub yeah, comes from? Yeah, yeah. the yeah. hub, a uh, group of us got together. In various Columbia, parts of the world? And it was all over the world. Right. But this summit was in New York State. Uh-huh. For the International Women Earth Climate Initiative. Okay. First time they had ever done anything like this. It took them two years to pull together a hundred speakers. Wow. And you know this was a real grassroots movement. Wow, a hundred speakers would take a long mm. time. I think that must yeah. have been a pretty long program. If each one had a minute, that'd be nearly two hours. If you give one minute or something. You know. They didn't have long. To <laughs> take. I was going to say <laughs> that 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 may be uh, maybe that's the death knell for the long-winded <laughs> Senator Snort type people to go on and on and on. But that's another issue. And they've asked me to edit a three-minute clip of the three-day summit. <laughs> Oh, you got a task, right? That's really, really high. It's like did. pulling teeth, right? Yeah. Or which baby you're going to select. Yeah. 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 All of that. Well, right, that's, that's great. And we're going to show a clip in a little while. And we yeah. want to also talk about the fact that we're now in this realm of public access. And yeah. there are certain unique qualities to that. And Josh, maybe you can chirp in here now because you, you were involved in WBAI. And you also were very involved intellectually in questions of improving the human condition your whole adult life, yes. it seems to me. You really have to share a little of your background. Yes. Well, I uh, attended uh, City College and so on, and I worked at City College, mm -hmm. business manager division, yeah. and I also taught a few courses in art and so on. And I was up at 138. And when I left City College, oh, I felt it was really very, very sad that WBAI didn't have a, a program on CUNY, uh -huh. especially since we sort of 
have been losing track of the mission of CUNY. Mm -hmm. We no longer had free tuition, no. like we, Cooper Union, yeah. no longer free tuition. It was no longer affordable. Mm. It never, it didn't, it no longer was seemed to be concerned with the prob problems of our minorities and even our majorities, mm. you know, like yeah. women. Right, issues, yeah, right, that's right. And so on, and I really got concerned, and I spoke to Bernard White, the oh, yeah. uh, program He's, director, uh -huh. and I said, we've got to do a program on CUNY. Yeah. So I brought in originally close to 100 people, including Michio Kaku. God bless friend, Michio Kaku, and, yeah. And, uh, yeah he's Professor Rivera and so many other p people. And we discussed how, what we wanted to do, and we created this program called CUNY, a mission Deferred. Uh, deferred. Yeah. Or right. subverted. Yeah. I use subverted, <laughs> yeah. but now we call it CUNY Emission Deferred. And we're in fact, we go on the air this week, the last Wednesday of the month. Uh huh. With your so program, on. yeah. Uh, you work with William Crane quite a bit, right? Yes. Beautiful yeah. guy. Beautiful man. Well, originally, Human being. I was the moderator. Uh -huh. But after all, I'm not in a faculty senate, hmm. and I'm not in the really difficult issue of attending the board meetings, and William Crane is. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, please, please, please become the moderator. Yeah. Now we tried other moderators, uh -huh. and they all moved on, yeah. and Professor Crane stayed with it, mm -hmm. and tonight he's doing a wonderful, wonderful program this on adjuncts and so on, uh -huh. which is a worldwide problem. Oh, I know, and you, you know, got... In other words, yeah. finding labor uh, to right. do a professor's work. Oh, yeah. For no pensions, mm -hmm. no medical care. Yeah, yeah. Just it's like work. indentured slavery in yeah. a certain sense, yeah. a model yeah. of that. And it's not only CUNY, if I may. You said it was in f tuition free. I did programs, you know, like uh, with people. Ramsey Clark. We did. He said he, as did I. Uh, when you were going to university, there was no question about, as it is now, they go and do a, a university training, and they come out absolutely burdened down with huge debt over the huge costs it is to go and administer, uh, to go to an, uh, 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 it's a huge debt. I mean, really huge debt mm -hmm. that the youth are burdened with when just as they come out trying to make their way in the world. And education was, uh, and probably ought be, in a certain sense, is so important. It ought mm -hmm. to be something that's freely available to people. And there is some possibility of getting intellectually relevant, uh, fulfilling programming in the realm of public access where it does not have to be seen as a business. The education has become a business and it's yeah. only related to the yeah. reason they go to get yeah. an educational degree is because they got a chance to get a certificate of mm -hmm. uh, apply compliance for something that's going to make it possible for them to get a job and make money. That's and that right. seems to be the only thing that's, that's, that's motivating the whole damn process. And it's a real serious problem, I it think, is. around the world. No, well, we have. Yeah? Well, they're in a trillion dollars worth of debt right now. Right, so yeah. that right. That is a very that's serious yeah. problem. You're too young to remember Ev Dirksen. Ev Dirksen from mm -hmm. Illinois. And used here to, is the big uh, question. How do we get in media how do we establish a level playing field, the kind of in, uh, media that George Stoney believed in? God believed bless in, George Stoney's memory, yeah. Or Mr. Glimpshire. Yeah, Mr. Glimpshire is wonderful. Level playing field yeah. where you can get the voices and the ethnicity and the issues of everybody discussed right. honestly mm -hmm. and without financial intervention uh -huh. and political mm -hmm. intervention. Right. In fact, before I came here, I was talking to Letitia James, who's running for public advocate. This very day. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I said to her, you know, we have no public a advocate. Yeah. Because even though Obama and his administration are fighting every war under the sun. We no longer have an OPA, mm -hmm. Office of Price Administrations. Right. We no longer have yeah. rent control. Uh -huh. We never, we no longer have, uh, we certainly don't have one-payer medical care, mm -hmm. and we don't have free tuition. 
Unlike most all of the developed countries yeah. in the world, and, and medical, yeah. yeah, right, right, and yeah. they're having, they're going to close down the government. They're going to try and close down the government, uh, you know, and that kind of stuff. It's it's really something that's go that's going on, and the yeah. educational potential of the multimedia is staggering. It's you and I tremendous. went the other day and saw the film about the uh, five yeah. people who were, uh, you know, the, the veteran uh, there, done by Ken Burns, and he does such good program, and the ability to have uh, or there's another I would tout. I think I've touted before. This is in the realm of really good editing and really professional and careful attention to the details of multimedia editing and so forth. Yeah. Uh, the History Channel had a program that was called uh, The History of the World, and what they meant was the whole universe, the whole existence of everything in two hours. And it was just absolutely beautifully put together. The graphics, even subtle layering of the graphics and everything was put together. And if you could get a thing where the languages of the world, I think it's coming, they're going to be able to autonomically translate the languages of the world autonomically, speak in English, mm. it comes out in Swahili and Spanish, but it, 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 it had not a written word in the whole thing. But you could have, an, you could have a guy in Kenya being educated to the under, it began with the Big Bang, mm -hmm. and it went through, and then they got all kinds of factual, like markers in DNA, and you could be educating the world population at the highest level of intellectual mm -hmm. understanding in a media that you that it would be accessible to everybody. That's something that's really, that's, really important, rather than the highly specialized things that the various divisions at the university go to such lengths to do in order right. to give a certificate where somebody can make money. It's all a business model it's more than education, right? Model. I don't, yeah, well, yeah I'm, I'm is, ranting too much. No, but. what you're talking about is unity. Yeah. We're, we would be unifying our understanding of who we are, mm -hmm. and then perhaps we could have a common humanity and stop all this endless fighting and wars. Well, that's something that we could veer off, and I, I, I've been thinking a lot about it in the shower. And we got this new dog I've been talking to about it, and he doesn't <laughs> seem to pick cotton on too much, but uh, everything. I've been thinking about that a lot and everything, mm -hmm. because now they're talking about uh, Snowden. God bless him. Uh, uh, Snowden, who uh, uh, revealed the N N National Security Agency, that they're now got with this exponential capability the means of tapping into everybody's life. There goes privacy of any kind. They can get into your account. They can get into all your personal mm -hmm. data. They can do anything they want. Yeah. And what that's saying, what does that mean? Is there anything? Is there anything? Um, positive about that or you know people are saying it's a violation of privacy the fourth yeah. amendment first amendment these kind of things coming out of the historical pattern but then i got to thinking maybe there's something to be said for the it because that's going exponential exponential is sort of unusual it's not one two three four it's you know one a hundred five hundred seventy mm -hmm. thousand and yes. I, I'll, I'll spell it out because it's just on my mind. It happens, and I, I, it doesn't seem to be brought up anywhere. But maybe there are models in terms of the molecular structure of nature or of the universe. Any single organism, like for instance, a, a human organism. Let's say it's about the average. Uh, there's you. There's Pamela. There's Josh. There's me. And there's my dog. And but any human organism, there is approximately in a human organism, 100 trillion individual cells. <laughs> That's a lot. That makes the internet look easy. Yeah. It is. But 100 trillion cells. Every cell matters. Every cell has an individual quality. Mm. Every cells matter. And every cell is interconnected with every other cell that's part of that, mm -hmm. and they combine in a relationship, a synergistic relationship mm -hmm. that represents an organism. <laughs> right. So one thinks that maybe if we ever get to a point where the world is organ, and how do we deal with it evolutionarily? It w what if we could get to a point where the world was really well set up in terms of what the future allows in a new kind of way that is not uh, the nightmare of injustice that is history, right. if you see it that way. Yeah. Maybe if everybody had uh, access to having a life that for them 
would have like an individual cell within an organism <laughs> and then there, there would be no reason for there to be zero sum mm -hmm. competition that is behind the wars and so forth that are done right. where if you, you you're into a non-zero sum condition of fulfilling or, or that that's what everybody was a have in their own terms and they were all connected to everybody else and all we did was have a collective responsibility for having the whole system work that's and right. there are measures there are there are elements of that within molecular structure within the structure of the universe even simple systems that doesn't have this incredible kind of concentration upon the individual we are all caught up with politically right. and economically in the basis of war and so mm -hmm. forth. Yeah. I'm getting yeah. off base and everything, but oh, I no, think there's something a, to be said for this thing. If you had a liberated order, which maybe may be the promise of the time, right. which we have never had. Mm -hmm. You have to get it realized it's that we never had. But we may be at a time of qualitative transformation of the human I condition. Want to believe it. You understand? Yes, I want to believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be what we are witnessing. You th it would be yeah. something I, I get off on this. That's a hobby horse, but you know, <laughs> it's there's been ten thousand generations of Homo sapien existence on this planet, and to right. say this is the defining generation of a process that's to be transformed qualitatively into one where there is mm -hmm. going to be fulfillment of each cell within that organism. Or Gaia, the guy uh, Lovelock says that the uh, the organic process is a organic process collectively the whole organic evolution uh -huh. so we may be coming to be part of the generation that is definitively relating in a cosmic sense to the universe is something that is a little odd to think we would be the generation that that makes up that unique mm. moment yeah. in the end time like of, of of the of the evolutionary process or something i don't know what do you think i, I think don't know we've come to that time that we, we are to, yeah do you think yeah. people in this 10th century thought they did or people had reasons oh. to think this is the do you <laughs> I understand doubt it. i doubt it but this has yeah. to do with communication and with a qualitative I mean, transformation and so forth i'm sorry i got off on well, a hobby horse but i think um, that's worth thinking about oh well, david suzuki yeah yeah the, okay the yeah scientist you know the canadian environmentalist right uh, beautiful he guy he speaks about what you're speaking about but with our atmosphere yeah but if we don't take care of our atmosphere it could change very very quickly well and that's we coming are seeing yeah. that that's and coming yeah. with global warming now. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. coming, yeah. So, you know, what you're talking about is happening, and if we can focus on a very positive and optimistic way of seeing it, as you just said, you know, I can't put it in your terms. Uh, it's okay. I can't put it in my own terms. I'm just mm -hmm. playing you with the idea. You write a book or have no. someone write a book about it. Oh, uh, no, no. It's but something simple for, you know, children. Well, say we've transcended material scarcity yeah. as an ontologic exactly. reality against which our design principles politically and otherwise, and it's never mentioned as possible. If you say to somebody, you there's enough say, for all. Yes. They hear out of your mind. There can't be. It's all zero sum. If I win, you lose. All that, and that's the well, basis of our politics, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Go ahead, Josh. Yeah. Uh, positivity is very, very helpful in independent media. There are two allies that I rely on when I do my program: hmm. the brain, the human brain, yeah. and <laughs> critical thinking. Critical like thinking. Like in the yeah. last twenty-four hours, I was struck by two things that I saw in regular media that really shook me up. And I, I didn't even hear anyone speak about it except very, very well-known people who, like Naomi Wolf. Yeah. One was uh -huh. that in yesterday's New York Times, it said the United States of America imports one Point two billion weapons a year. Exports. Yeah. Exports. No, yeah, yeah. 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 They they export one now in a situation a growth like industry, that. Yeah. You realize that the average hoodlum mm -hmm. and uh, punk who they are locking up are not responsible for guns. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. here it said in the first page of the 
of the business section of the New York Times, the United States, with its ally Russia, deports or imports $1.2 billion in weapons, mostly AK-47. Well, those are armed, but that, that's relatively course, small. You could build one jet aircraft Jeremy for that. Scahill, and, yeah, Jeremy Scahill, democracy yeah. now, uh -huh. made the statement that yesterday Obama, speaking before the United Nations, yeah, I heard him. was really the poster boy for imperialism. Well, World imperialism is a term that and is... That struck me as the absolute truth. Well, well but I, how much discussion and how this is going to play out on in, independent media, besides Jeremy Scale and Naomi Wolf, is something that Naomi remains Klein to be seen. also. Naomi Klein too. <laughs> yeah, in economics. Yeah, right. Yeah, and 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 yeah. Uh, we got Amy. Amy Goodman's mm -hmm. really good. Tom Hartman's good. Mr. Paul is. I mean, Paul is good. Yeah. Pamela's good. Paul is good. <laughs> You're good. Hey, uh, does that? But yeah, that's that's the thing that you see a lot of in the news. That kind of thing is all the conflicts out of history. But trying to find something that offsets the the ultimate expression of that is weapons, which has been the basis of uh, assumed political legitimacy. You could co-opt with ideas or ethics or something. But the main thing that gave political legitimacy to various tribes throughout history is they had the weapons by which they could coerce and conquer the other <laughs> or um, or impose their system. It's called realpolitik. Whoever's got mm -hmm. the power, the club, can hit somebody. The Vikings can come and kill anywhere they want. And, that's the and it's still there. Right. Whoever's got the power wins. That's all. It's right. a simple thing like that. But you got to get over something like that because the weapons have become species lethal. That's right. They wipe out every single human being. Just the Trident submarines, I believe, could do that that are in our arsenal. Right. So there's something. And all the rest of life that can't speak for themselves. And well, they're. The plants. And yeah, I don't think they'd be able to destroy life, but they could destroy Homo sapien existence Certainly, of consciousness. Yeah. But all of this, this is all philosophizing, this and is it a is good all coming. It's all coming off the fact that there is coming a maturation, like punctuated equilibrium. It may be a time of a new relationship in the cosmos, a liberated order, if we can make it. Mm -hmm. Or you come to a double edged sword, we can maybe stop evolution. We couldn't do that even before about 1970, our time. Mm -hmm. And then there, we may have transcended material scarcity and it's galloping exponentially. There's enough for all. That's right. something we can't, it's never mentioned, but it may be we're at that time. But that's all part, and then communication, particularly public access, is a place where you can have communication with people and educational content of the highest order. And in that vein, you have a right. clip you wanted to play. Yeah. And let's talk about yeah. you, because you're a major producer, uh, you know, editing and that sort of thing. Yeah. And we can well, get that clip in. So maybe terrific. you could, as they yeah. say, set it up, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. we'll come back. Let's set up this clip. Because you t tell about what it is, and then well, they can run. it was actually produced here at m and Good. Uh, Josh and I had the idea to honor Women's History Month. Good. And I've been working with the Spirit of Thunder Heart, which is an all-women drumming circle that yes. just came together here in the Hudson River Valley. They've teamed so up with the two row wampum, too. That's right. The Iroquois yeah. pattern that gave le uh, lessons to Franklin and Washington and others yes. of the Constitution principles of this country, yeah, yeah. from the Iroquois nation, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they did that this summer, uh -huh. and uh, their music, um, we're going to be hearing on this clip the uh, Mohawk Welcome song. And that's the soundtrack on the Two Row Wampum Renewal campaign. And it's that you're the authentic drum okay. of the traditional, you know, Native Americans. Okay. And it's, it represents the heartbeat of our heartbeat and also Mother Earth. Okay, Mother Earth is so another it's principle. it's like a meditation. Yeah, really. and ecology and mm -hmm. that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, so, uh, Patrick, or in the booth, maybe you could run that. Okay, run that now then.
wonderful spirit of thunderheart right here in new york city at the m and n studios playing live and tonight you have a performance in greenwich village yes we do greenwich yeah. village yeah. seven yeah <laughs> This is a clip from the documentary film that I'm producing right now, and uh, there's more to come. Uh, the Spirit of Thunderheart is also producing a CD that will be released this spring. Their Facebook page will be announcing. of that song amazing grace would be maybe the great one the first song that could be translated autonomically one language to all the languages of the world autonomically that would be one of the first songs that might be translated in japanese and everything like that wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to have the language barrier broken or would that be disruptive <laughs> if they get to be where you could speak and it comes out in Japanese or Spanish yeah. and then back and forth yeah, and break great. it. Would that yeah. be a good thing yeah. or a bad thing? Yeah. That would certainly be progress. Yeah. It'd be change. But would it be good or bad? It would be good. You think it would? Good. Okay. Yeah. 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 We should save our languages, and, but we should be able to understand each other. I think that might help. I think it's about 5,000 right. languages, yeah. I think. And, and we're actually, losing a lot of the American Indian well, languages. Wow. Way too much. Yeah. That's what the United Nations is really supposed to mm -hmm. be. And before yeah. the program started, a lot of young people were here from the United Nations. That's right, they were. That's their just main came. mission, mm -hmm. is brotherhood and learning to live together and uh, peace. And it's a really, a very, very sad commentary that when our president addressed the UN in 2013, He's talking about military action. That well, was actually unconscionable. And I, I, just, uh, I just felt 
as if he came from another planet when I heard him say those words. Well, that's interesting you think that, although he does come from the planet of what's called reality. You see, you're being idealistic in a certain sense, that let's all live in peace, let's everyone be happy, let's everybody help everybody, let's help. And you'll notice that the political classes usually help those who are already very well established and ignore the least advantaged against all the prescriptions of all our wisdom schools throughout all of history. Mm -hmm. So you're just not being realistic when you don't realize what really matters who's got the club. Mm -hmm. well, it's power. I power, wanna, and that's the. Do you understand I what I'm saying? It's a cycle, and mm -hmm. what we just witnessed of uh, Obama, President Obama, speaking like that at the UN. I want to believe this is a pivotal turning point. Okay, I would like to, to think the that. Oh, yeah. bitter end mm -hmm. of what what's going on here. Well, we we, we know? did listen to the president of Iran, who had some things to say about things differently, mm -hmm. and they go yes. back a long way, and the people of the world. But they're still fighting essentially over uh, who's got the uh, ability to intimidate others. I mean, that's well, been it's the the, lower the consciousness thinking. Well, it, no, but it's the consciousness thinking of virtually all of human history in but a very you don't real think sense. Like that, Josh doesn't. I don't. The three. No, of but us, the political the classes course. that have ruled, yeah. whether it's Rome for a thousand years, the dynastic states, mm -hmm. what gave them the ability to uh, the kings and so forth. Everybody's wallowing around in the mud. Most of the people of poverty and of backwardness in terms of exactly. where we're coming now, but now we're coming to a time where it may be that everybody will be able to have. Cervantes was said, there are only two classes in the world, the haves and the have-nots. Have we ever seriously considered and put up on the table, what does it mean to be a have? What does it mean to be a have? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it it's means always that you a, have a lot of responsibility to make sure that well, people who do not have have. Well, if you have a have, uh, and is it possible that everybody could become a have in their own terms? Now, some people would say you can't do that until you've got a whole swimming pool full of diamonds. Then maybe you're a have if you've got that much. You've got that much concentrated power, then you can intimidate and you can do all those things. Mm -hmm. But well, to be a have, a intimidation. but what if, you, what if you're sitting there at a table and there's 10 kids, let's say, and there's one hot dog? This is history. There's never been enough. It's always scarcity. For me to win, you have to lose. I have to steal from you mm. in order to have my tribe strong. It, it is but what a, if they're there and there's 20 hot dogs? And mm. everybody, you can only eat so many hot dogs. You can only have so much joyful association with your family members or with the dog or with the, the things. I mean, it may not be so unbelievable to think that we may have to get at a point where everybody will be, in a certain sense, in terms of their own given sense, a have. You have the art supplies you need. You have the this, you have the communication, you have the communication with other people. That right. the, the whole of the planet could be haves, in mm -hmm. a sense, and it's not just some idealistic something that is to be ignored by all us realists who realize what really matters is who's got the biggest club, which seems to be well, the basis of the political and business response. leaders. It's yeah. a conditioned response, and oh. at this point, when we have such destructive warfare going on. Yeah, existentially new. It is time <laughs> to really take a look at ourselves, I think. But how can we be so good. arrogant to think that ours is, in fact, the deciding generation? Isaac Asimov said that. This generation. We could have been born in 1600 or mm -hmm. 600. Right. And it was just a long process up Mount Sisyphus, mm -hmm. right? Long. And this is the defining generation. Isn't that just being sort of um, egoistically... Uh, uh, well, I think that's uh, a good use of ego. You do? Okay, yeah. 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 Because we need a pivotal change. We can no longer do this. I mean, the Dalai Lama said that war is obsolete. So did Jesus. In fact, it is. Yeah. So did Jesus. So did Buddha. So did the Shiva and all of the it spiritual is. things. And it's been roundly ignored by the political class du jour throughout all of history. History is a nightmare of injustice yeah. from which we're attempting to awaken. Will we ever awaken? And are mm -hmm. we at a moment of awakening, which might I'm be something it. worth considering and putting up on the table along with all the geopolitical things about how we can't do anything until we have everybody kowtowing to our own system. You called it imperialism, but it's been called that 
you know, whether it was Rome or what. Anyway, I, I, I shouldn't go, but we're, we're, <laughs> we're, what we really wanted to talk about is public access mm -hmm. in terms of a way in which there could be communication. What do you think? Do you think that, uh, are you keeping track of things? How do things look to you? Or are, are you, uh, uh, we have Manhattan Neighborhood Network. We just got a franchise uh, agreement, mm -hmm. which is good. I'm not sure of all the terms. I would like to know what the actual terms of that are. And I would like to know, and, um, uh, also, whether or not the uh, the meetings of the board and so forth should be maybe, I noted uh, public television, you know, Channel 13, mm -hmm. they had a meeting, they said, we're having a, a board meeting of the board that responsible for public, uh, you know, PBS and, and Channel 13 and all that, oh. and it's totally open to everybody in the country, everybody who wants to come, there's room for all, come, you can come, make copies, do this, it will make yeah. everything available. Shouldn't they be doing something like that about <laughs> where I things stand with public access yeah, and have it be open to an open forum, an open forum and to let them know what the heard. what the dimensions are and then also what about what's going on across the country we have the alliance for community media mm -hmm. there's 3000 mm -hmm. of these access centers across the country That's right and there's a great responsibility because there's a way in which financing can happen from the cable industry it has big That's right. public relations implications and how are things going in Brooklyn? I mean, not in well, Brooklyn, but I mean, no, in, in Berkeley or in Ames, sure, Iowa, exactly. or in, in, in Ann Arbor or in Madison and places, mm -hmm. because there's a place where people, the citizens can make television, bring things up, and not have to be involved with money. Right. Because the costs are met from a franchising agreement with the cable industry, right. which gets public relation value out of it. Where does all that stand? And That's how right. important is it for the general citizenry to be interested in this phenomena where citizens can make serious television programming and have it be done and not be concerned with it as a career move? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. I don't know if, if they don't want to. If they want to, they can right. be thinking that way. But so That's much right. is over on the idea, so much of human activity is how can I make money? because the economic system is so out of sync right. with what's required to liberate everyone. Yeah. But we ought to start thinking about a thing where everybody can free to be an artist or what they want to be rather than being told what they have to do by some authority figure. Right. Well, what do you think? Well, I believe that we should have sustainability. And okay. we really need to take a look at what that you know, paradigm is. And there are people. That's what this yeah. uh, forum was about this weekend. Uh -huh. And people can go onto YouTube and look at it. A hundred voices speaking very briefly, but it's coming together to bring forth sustainable solutions. Are you going to use haiku to get a three-minute piece out of all that? <laughs> You're going to use, do yes, not I tell me it. I am there. <laughs> yeah, you know, because you know what I'm saying. And that's what you need to get. Or you have to get patterns. You have to do some pattern recognition, yeah, critical right. thinking yeah. about a lot of different patterns. things because every we're coming to know everything in a certain kind of existentially significant new way in which the world is, uh, is, is developing. Right. Well, communication is the most important in dialogue. Yeah. And through public access we have that, as you were saying, we really should be able to be aware of what's going on in all these other cities. Yeah, it, 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 see, well, there's things going on nationally. We have ABC and all the traditional things. We have cable networks, we have transponders, mm -hmm. we have people who are in the what's called corporate media and that, and they have a great role and people are, but the thing that motivates most all of that are ad revenues that will come so you can sell cornflakes rather than Wheaties. It's competition and that's part of the business model, but the business model has taken over the universities. Yeah. They've turned it into a big uh, investment you make in order to make money and it seems to be that's the only value that has any currency. Yeah. in our society at now, and there are a lot of other values that ought to be artistic and creative values. And yeah, go yeah, ahead, talk, always, just talk. It's always an uphill struggle because we do have stumbling blocks everywhere. Yeah. And, and they, are, uh, they are called accountability and mm -hmm. transparency. Uh -huh. And so far, because of the human situation and human need, nature, it's almost impossible to get 100% transparency and accountability. Many, mm -hmm. us, many of us are trying, and we've gotten in trouble at uh, WBAI yeah. and in other places. 
and uh, critical thinking is very, very hard. And you cannot, perhaps you can say, wherever there are human beings, there'll always be obstacles to establishing that kind of those kind of principles and that kind of maybe system. we're going to have to but trans we shouldn't give up trying maybe we Try. should be Congrats. not limiting ourselves and we shouldn't be limiting ourselves to rule out the possibility that we're at a moment as has all of evolution of transcending 200,000 years of our existence as a species and we're coming into a process of speciation in the relationship to the broader cosmos Maybe if humanity, yeah. like we, we were contained That's in Homo right. habilis for a hundred million That's and a right. half years, then came Homo sapien. So there may come, they call it Homo sapien sapien. Maybe they call it Homo sapien 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 or something. <laughs> but it, that we have to have a qualitative, existentially new relationship that can be up on the table as a consideration for design parameters for how we're going to form capital, how we're going to distribute demand, how we're going to have this society organized, right. and all of our institutions are reifying outdated institutions that are being transformed at the level of design. Mm -hmm. I don't know, what do you think? Yeah. Well, I, I think you're onto something there. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a leap, and there's quantum physics. Yes, now. indeed. Yeah, yeah. now. That speaks about leaps of consciousness. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it's people like ourselves who are creative and meditative that do use another uh, consciousness. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's why we are not concerned about the things that are holding down this progress other than they're holding us back. But should from there not be achieving this? Okay, but shouldn't there be up on the table of considering design or what's going on or what are the principles by which we're organizing something other than the established political cant? Yes. That is not. Yes. So if you were well, to say, that's what public access if you has a, public access has a better yeah. chance maybe of achieving that because yeah. you can get around the money by having a, access to equipment that allows you not to be concerned with anything about making a buck. Now that right. seems like it right. is subversive beyond any thought that anyone would have any thought other than personal gain order. at what they do. That's sort of a thought of that's the legitimate way for a human being to be. It's a new and anything order. else other that's than right. that is suspect as some woody-headed idealist is. But it might be something that is really important in order to gestate the ideas that can be up on the table with the others including maybe we've transcended material scarcity. Do you realize what an upset that would be in terms of our established orders? Yes. You know, that there is enough right. rather than scarcity, right. that we have abundance. To There's have a book out now, Abundance, about. written by a major Ed Wall Street guy, right. and the exponential mm -hmm. thing is not only just information, it's also robotics and the productive process is being automated and being right. exponentially increasing. You understand? Yeah, I do. But I, I do feel that uh, we, it's the political system that's created the not enough syndrome. And, you know. Well, it's always, it may be existentially, there never has been. That's the thing. Yeah, well. There hasn't we been. Have, we have the ability to produce now and have enough. It's just distributing it fairly and equally. And that's where the two row wampum is such a Okay, talk about it. That's something worth uh, taking. Treaty that, yeah. uh, I'm learning so much. It's yeah. the first treaty. That was good drumming, incidentally. Yeah. They really yeah. knew what they were doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you think about it, that's really the first communication, the drum. Yeah, it was, yeah. You know, I got a friend, Africa, Ornette we, Coleman. He's, right? Yeah, he's a great jazz musician. He said the drum. Wanna, and the, yeah. Music came before words. He thought, I want to thank Pamela yeah. Yeah. for introducing me to the Onondaga people. Oh yeah, that right. was quite ex an experience. And now I'm going around asking questions that people don't even ask. Anymore. Like what? Ask, ask, ask. I'll ask, 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 ask you that. one question. Yes, do. But don't answer it. <laughs> okay. Now. Uh, why? Why is it that Libya, what resulted in Libya, where the imperialist powers got together and destroyed? the Gaddafi regime, mm -hmm. why is the situation in Syria playing itself out 
so differently? Well, what's the reason? You don't want me to answer, so I won't. But I'm going <laughs> to do a, a pro question. after we do this program. <laughs> we're going to do a program with Eric uh, Stephen Stephen Eric Broner, who's going to be talking about that very issue and what's going on with Iran and with Syria yeah. and all that sort of thing. And other people have different ideas. And in Libya, they didn't show us dead bodies like all those children mm. on the front pages of the newspaper. Mm. You've been to Libya? <laughs> Did you go to? Have you been to Libya? You weren't there. You haven't been to Libya, have you? Did you go with me to Libya once? I wish I did. Oh, no, no, no. I was, <laughs> I was very taken with it. I think he was ahead of the curve. Yeah, I think that was really a horrible thing. And they just say he was a great tyrant. He wasn't. He was in, he was in advance of uh, Western thinking in terms of economics. They, they had a private sector they kept. It wasn't like Soviet Union. They, they had a thing where you set up a business and they had signs everywhere under Gaddafi. Partners, not wage earners. He was against the labor theory of value. The idea that all it had to be owned. The yeah. That's what we need here. Well, because we productive are getting obscenely expensive to the people who aren't needed in the productive process. You need to have an well, alternate way to form few, capital into demand. Right. There are a few doing cooperatives, which is what you're speaking Mondragon about. Mondragon out of some, yeah. which is what Rick Wolf, the Yeah, right, right, right. With economic update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About. Yeah, he's very good, and yeah. So that's a really great model. Yeah, right? that is you a know, model. We have all these college students that don't have jobs. Jobs, they should really come together and create their own cooperatives. Okay, and they should be able, you know what they could do too? They could be able to come over and join Manhattan Neighborhood Network and Public Access yeah. as a cooperative in the creation of meaningful television programming <laughs> that could educate the yeah, world to a new reality and maybe stave off blowing up the whole damn world that one's very worried about. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, right. Yeah, so, so it is a, a thing like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, it's really interesting uh, that uh, I just think uh, I'm so happy to have you aboard, uh, yeah, uh, Pamela. Relatively here, new, yeah. and you you're bringing a I whole lot of artistic. Here you and Josh. Well, no, but it's here, and then yeah, and uh, you're joining, me. and uh, and we had Dee Dee Halleck on uh, yesterday, and she was a grand, great, great grandmother of public access yeah. before it was a gleam in anybody's eye, even real and everything. Pioneer. Yeah, real pioneer, and yeah, continues. Thank goodness and for Dee Dee. Yeah, Dee Dee. No, it was a it was a very hard struggle over the long haul as it was all developing the teletech communications and everything, and the public access. And it all comes around 1970 as a major year. 1970 is more significant, in my view, than is 1776 or the year 1000 <laughs> or something like that. That is taken as markers. Uh, there was a qualitative transformation, one aspect of which was that's when public access was born, about 1970, the same period of Woodstock and all those other kinds of moments of sensing the times they are changing and there was something blowing in the wind. And it wasn't just sex, drugs, and rock and roll, like, you know, the party and that kind of stuff, but it was big changes that were going on existentially that we still haven't got the measure of in our political that's right. A system that yeah. maybe we should, and public access could help get us there, maybe. It's definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, this is uh, really good talking to you. We're going to be yeah. uh, talking about these issues and everything. And Josh, you're 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 doing you're still doing Josh Walensky's show on a regular basis. Oh, yes. How do you like the way the system's set up? We we only got a few a few seconds well, left, really. There, We've made some changes, and uh, there there are uh, things that we have to learn so that we can move on. But you know, I'm glad that they they try to tackle the problem of high definition and editing. You know, we have to keep up with the trends, mm -hmm. and we have to also make it the kind of place that attracts more people. But everyone has to keep up, keep in mind what we are about. We are about the community and its problems, and we are about reality, the real reality oh, thank you. of where people are going to go to school, and where they're going to live, and how they're going to take care of the elderly, and how they're going to take care of the children, and how we're going to live up to our responsibilities of uh, the Indian treaties, you know, mm -hmm. and also taking care of the planet mm -hmm. and how are we going to prevent 
hydrofracting mm -hmm. and yep. profiteering. Mm -hmm. And right. eventually, if I can paraphrase Beth uh, Lamont, God bless how her. are we going to jump from capitalism to perhaps a more uh, a fairer and better system than uh, I mean I like what Richard Wolff said one day he said you know capitalism is a very vibrant resilient system but it's extremely unfair okay <laughs> and 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 the great, true. the great uh, critic of uh, and competitor to uh, uh, Keynes John Maynard Keynes Lord John Maynard Keynes was Jean Peter he said he would say, do you think capitalism survives? He says, no, I don't think it can. That may be a harbinger of what's to come. Yeah. So Josh, thank you very, yeah. very much. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Pamela, yeah. Thank you. darling, thank you very much. Thank and in the audience, thank you for viewing. <laughs> Pleasure to have their thank perceptions. You, uh, we'll be coming back again tomorrow here on the conversation <laughs> series. So thanks for viewing. And uh, uh, so uh, I guess we could go on talking, but we've been talking and thank you very much. And public access is an important mission. And Good. thanks a lot for helping put it Thank all together, you guys. Public access. Yeah, okay. Good. We'll come back tomorrow. Thanks very much for doing <laughs> That was through the year, yeah. yeah.